starting off with knowing your running type. So the way that you can simply do that is look at your past 2K time trial um, and work out um, the average speed that you min um, you move during that 2K time trial. So you, you want to do that by working out the total meters. So for someone that did a 2K time trial and that took them six minutes, then we'll divide that by the 2K by the total seconds that that took to give them their average speed meters per second. Okay, so let's say you're... Average meters per second is five meters per second. That's your maximal aerobic speed time. Then we'll, we'll compare that with your uh, the fastest speed that you've run. So for those that've got a smartwatch like this Garmin here, or for those that wear GPS at training, you can contact your sports scientist and ask them for your max velocity. And that the gap between those two, so let's say your max velocity is nine, your average speed that you move out for your 2K time trial is five, your gap between that is four. And we'll use that for your repeat speed session. That's known as your anaerobic speed reserve. Number two, from a frequency point of view, I've had the best results from a 2K time trial. So particularly when we're preparing athletes for the combine where they run four times a week. Um, I certainly don't, not a big believer for running every day or running more than four. I think four is enough if the quality is there and the, the, it's a purpose-driven program. Um, so four times a week. And I'll typically balance that with a start the week with a, uh, easy steady state run. So we're trying to focusing not on their speed, but focusing on their heart rate. So the goal for the athlete is to keep their heart rate between 60 and 70%. So that can be quite challenging for athletes because all they want to do is work at a really, really fast pace and push themselves all the time. So having the discipline to actually have it as an easy day and, and the easy way that I explain that to the athlete is you actually want to be feeling better at the end of the 20 to 30 minute jog than you do at the end. Number three, uh, important to uh, think about variation, how you can keep training interesting. So catch up with mates and train with them. Um, mix up the terrain. You might go outdoors for particularly those fart leg sessions on the Saturday. Um, or you might mix it up and do your repeat speed that uh, Wednesday session on a uh, track um, and then mix up between different ovals uh, just to change the stimulus. Tip number four, if you are going to do any cross training, I would only do that if you, um, for whatever reason, you haven't been able to get to those four run sessions in. Maybe there's a niggle um, that you're offloading and giving just a, a short little rest, so you, but you still want to get that stimulus from our um, cardiovascular fitness point of view. So that's where cross training can come in as a, as a substitute. Um, but typically because you know, if we're thinking bike, rowers, ski, airdyne, um, the muscle actions aren't um, transferable to your running. And then the fifth power tip, um, it would be remiss of me to not mention how important your lifestyle is. So if you're doing all this work, but you're not recovering optimally, you're not going to reap the same benefits. So make sure you train hard, but also recover hard as well. So put in the time, um, you know, there's some uh, athletes out there that will spend double the amount of time that they do training, doing dedicated recovery work. So that's not including your eight hours that you're sleeping at night. That's active recovery, things like um, going for a walk, going, doing cool recovery, um, sauna. Um, so dedicated, purpose-driven recovery is really, really important. Um, obviously, your passive recovery helps as well. So getting a foam rolling session or getting a stretch or, or getting a massage, um, all those things count, but making sure that you're, you're putting in time into your body to actually work in rather than always just uh, working out.